It's a uh, rainy, wintry day here in Southern California, and that means uh, salamanders are out, and I'm gonna go take a look and see if we can find the invasive tiger salamander. So, that's a tough one. It's uh, not a lot of people know too much about them in the sense of where they're found. Um, there's only a couple spots in San Diego, kind of localized populations. Um, I've been to one uh, out east, but nothing. So now I'm going to a, a different spot and uh, we'll see what happens. When we first got to the site, we noticed that the pond was completely dried up and so we walked inside. We thought we might see some tigers down in the pond area trying to find water. Even though these salamanders are terrestrial, they need the water for their larvae, which are aquatic. But all we ended up finding was this California toad. All right, so I thought it was an earthworm, stepped right over it, and Cameron said, hey, dummy, look again. Oh yeah, it's got eyes and legs. That's not an earthworm. Little garden slender on the crawl. Pretty cool. It's up there, right? I'm totally lost right now. Okay. All right, when I first got here, ended up seeing one in a hole, but as soon as I shined my light, it uh, went down the hole. So we're gonna check back and see if it's there. And if so, we'll grab it. Oh, right here, okay. Nope, I don't see it. Nope, that was the hole though, where it was at. All right, well, we'll come back in just a bit. All right, so Cameron stumbled on one. There it is. Check it out in the burrow. All right, check it out. Cameron, once again, saves the day. So this is the invasive tiger salamander, barred tiger salamander. They're not native to San Diego, but um, they are here in a couple spots. Um, and I wanna say that the reason that they're here was people actually used to use them as bait. I believe they're larva uh, for fishing and uh, ended up uh, obviously coming off the hook or getting loose or whatever. And this is the biggest salamander we have here in San Diego for sure. Um, they're about three to four inches from snout to vent and then can reach, uh, oh, I don't know, probably seven to maybe even 10 inches if you include the tail. Uh, this one is actually, we believe a female. There's no testes here. The uh, males will actually have really big testes and you can uh, tell the male and the female apart that way. Um, and this one's a very dull colored one. It kind of doesn't have really bright yellow spots, um, but it's still a really cool one nonetheless. Now, like I said, they are invasive. So one of the threats that they have is they can take out uh, kind of the, the native populations of uh, uh, other amphibians, really, other salamanders, uh, frogs, uh, stuff like that, because um, they will basically outcompete any of the other amphibians. Uh, they're pretty voracious. Anything that they can fit in their mouth, they'll they'll take out and they'll obviously eat the food source of the other amphibians as well. So, uh, one thing to note on these uh, guys is their tail, like most salamanders, is actually poisonous. So, I don't want to be touching the tail and then touch my eyes or my mouth or whatever. So, I just got to wash my hands afterward. Um, it won't kill you. It won't do anything too bad to you. But, you know, you'll have a reaction to it. Probably be a little annoying. Cameron was just telling me that another cool fact about them is you can actually, not that we would ever do this, but say they got injured, uh, if an appendage happened to come off, that their entire appendage will actually grow back, which that's way, way cool. So now, like I showed earlier, they, they're found in the burrows. That's where Cameron ended up finding one is it was kind of just sticking his head out by the burrow. Um, and uh, it's kind of a rainy evening, humid, so sticking his head out. It's a little cold. Um, typically, you want to, I think, find them when it's about eh, 60 or higher. It's in the 
low 50s if not high 40s so anyway we'll let her go right back where we found her but pretty darn cool he's there grab him yeah. if he if he is i'm not grabbing him okay that's right where's the hole where's the hole where's the it's right here i think yeah right here <sighs> But it's moist, man. I'll tell you that right now. Oh, there was one down there. Did it? Okay, dive, 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 dive. Yeah! <laughs> Number two. Yeah. Oh my god, he looks like a giant. I, I pulled him out of the hole. Yeah. <laughs> kind of intimidating, huh? So I want to pull him out so you can see yeah. what he looks like. He's So we're making sure to get our hands wet so that way any salts uh, are off of our uh, hands and it's just safer for the animal. Check out that little guy. When I say little, still pretty good size. We ended up finding several that night. Like I said earlier in the video, you want to go out on rainy nights, usually above 60 degrees, that's optimal, and look in rodent holes or burrows. If they are out or are going to be out, you will see them right at the entrance to that burrow. Sometimes, like in this case, we found several in the same burrow. So we found, ended up finding four. Are you kidding me? What's up? Look at this. Another one. Literally, I saw it right when you did.